gentlemen, in today's stream, we're going to continue work on that cave game I was talking about last video. If you haven't seen that, basically it's a Souls-like game. It's also kind of a roguelike, set in a cave. Deeper you go, more dangerous monsters, bada bing, bada boom. You know how it works. In today's video, I'm going to build a boss for it. There's a little twist though. Four key components that I need to make this boss work. Every time I get one of the components completed, I have to spin a wheel of pain that Jack came up with. I'm then forced to receive whatever punishment they put me through. I'm 100% going to regret this. But let's get started. So first, let's talk about the boss design. What I'm originally using as a reference is this video by Sleep Token. They've got these cool music videos and this creature thing i think would make a pretty sick boss i think this is a phenomenal starting point so the first those four core things that we need to work on is the spider legs so this is the initial spider legs that we've got set up here in blender i went for like some really simple shapes so what we need to do is make this walk in a procedural sort of manner because i don't know how to animate spider legs okay so looking at our spider here in unity you'll notice these little green circles around all the legs that's where the legs are supposed to be standing. What we want to do is keep those green circles in that same space on the parent game object. And every time we move the spider forward, those green circles are going to move as well. If I drag the spider around and the legs get too far away, picks them up and moves them back to circle. So it gives us like a bit of a spider sort of walk. It's not perfect. You could say it's a little buggy. It's good enough. This is all code I actually did a year ago back when I did that uh, Love, Death, and Robots video with the uh, procedural animation of the little running aliens. I'm very thankful that me a year ago did it, but I really hate me from a year ago because I didn't leave any comments and now I have to like relearn all of this code an entire time and I'm wondering like, why did I do this to myself? Why? Why? Okay, so looking back over at the source material, I realized that these legs are a bit more twisted and sort of demented. I, I don't like how uniform they are. So I hopped back into Blender and redid the legs so that they were a little less uniform and a little bit more interesting. This is what I came up with. So this is how our new spider looks in game. All right, I think that this is all that we need to do for the spider legs. So this knocks off our first goal, meaning that I have to spin the uh, wheel of pain. Why did I agree to this? Ah. Oh. Mm. All right, someone linked some degenerate content. Yeah, yeah, what's that? It's 10 hours? There you go. The second core feature that we need to work on is the rest of the body. What we need here is we need to add multiple arms. We need to add a massive axe. Um, a scare... <laughs> I can't concentrate. Someone likes something at least a little bit better. Hold on a sec. Wait. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. All right. This is better. I can at least concentrate. There is some huge news out of Unity this week. They just announced that the 2022 version of the LTS just released. It's going to make a huge impact, not just on my game, but on the ecosystem entirely. I'm super excited to give it a shot because not only does it include, you know, performance increases, but it'll also include new things like volumetric materials that'll make the fog and mists and caves much creepier to higher quality waters. There's also been major changes to lighting in URP, such as removing the light limit that caused me deep personal pain on Tavern Team. There's LOD crossfading, decal layers, the list goes on and on. Also, Dots is finally here, and I'm super excited to give that a shot in the future. Check out Unity's blog post down below to learn more, and let's get back to the video. So let's start working on the rest of the guy's body. It's a bunch of skulls. It would actually be a lot easier to sculpt if I just took one skull and duplicated it everywhere. But looking back through the Unity project, I did find a skull that I had that's low poly. So I'm gonna drag that into Blender, duplicate it a bunch of times, and then we'll call that the body. All right, so we got some skulls going on. Now we need the core body and we need four arms. So what I'm gonna do for that is to set up a... All right, so we are back in Blender now with a top half of a torso of a model. We do only have two arms. I specifically said that I wanted four arms for this because four is a bigger number than two. Now, in order to convert a two-armed model into a four-armed, you need to take a lot of um, detailed steps. So what we're going to do here is select the arms and then duplicate them and move them down. You can see he's got one, two, four-ish arms. All right, so let's take a look at him in-game. Yeah, 
I think that's, uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. So the next thing that we need to do is add that mask. Looking at the video specifically, kind of a circle shape, some spikes coming out of it. And then also some, uh, for monetary reasons, this is ink coming out of his eyes. Cause, uh, yeah, ink comes out of spiders and squids. We're making, uh, spider game all right i made a i made a mask it's like a uh like a tortilla all right adding the spikes and a little rigid outline i think makes the mask a tiny bit better but admittedly i i, I think that's spooky enough now the mask is like an ornate gold color and although i don't think i'm going to texture it right now what i am going to do pop over to the unity asset store find a gold texture, drag that into Unity, and then, boop. Let me uh, add some particle effects from the eyes to cry the ink. I'll probably just use this fire particle and make some changes to it so that it looks like ink. Oh, I should probably throw that anime back on so you guys don't tell me I welched on my bed. Because my soldiers do not buckle or yield when faced with the cruelty of this world. My soldiers push forward. My soldiers scream out. My so Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be coding. All right, all right, there we go. Now we got it crying. So now that we have the um, ink crying out of the eyes, let's see how it looks in game. All right, let's see if it's terrifying. Yeah, it's creepy. It is pretty weird how he's dabbing, but um, I'll fix it. Got the skull body, we've got the cloth on the bottom, the spider legs, the big axe I'll add as well. But I think we are officially done part two. All right, back to the board for another spin. All right, all right, we can work with this. Someone give me a decent idea that isn't going to ruin uh, the game entirely. It can ruin it a little bit, just not entirely. I pitched on scary voice. Like I'm just imagining some like high pitched like child voice. Oh, this is such a good idea. We'll have some like uh, like creepy sort of child voice. So you hear it and you think, oh no, there's a uh, there's a child lost in the cave. I got to go save it. And um, it's this thing. All right, let's crack open audacity. Help, can anyone hear me? I need help. All right, let's do this. And then let's uh, change up the pitch a little bit. All right, I think we have something decent that we can run with here. Let's drag it into the game and uh, see how it goes. Can anyone hear me? I need my mommy. Help me, it's so cold. Yeah, it's it's terrifying. It's terrifying. That's um we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep this uh we're gonna keep this muted until I am done. I uh, should transition to either a different voice. Yeah, you're right. Let's um let's throw in like the Alex Jones when uh, combat starts. All right. Well, it looks like we finally got through that one challenge uh, that added like an extra hour. But the next thing that we're going to work on is uh, intelligent AI. All right. So the way we're going to have this AI work is it's going to walk from patrol point to patrol point back and forth. Super spider like super creepy like. All right. So It'll casually walk around unless it sees the player, in which case it's going to need to rotate, find the player, and then attack. Let's see if we can get that. Yep, that'll work. The eyes are bugging out again, so I got to change them. So you'll also notice that uh, I wound up adding the axe to the monster. It's definitely looking pretty creepy, and uh, I decided to use that extra voice line we had. Destroy the child. So now when it sees the player, it'll yell that and then approach. All right, so we just got done part three, which is adding the intelligent AI. So now it can detect the player, it can move in a patrol state. That's cool. Last thing we need to do is add combat. But before that, I gotta spin the wheel. Okay, okay. Got to step four, which is the AI attack. I want to set up like two types of attacks. That way that the player has to learn both the different attacks and attack patterns of the monster. All right, so in game, we're going to try to observe both of those attacks. One is a light attack. One is a heavy attack. The um, light attack has a quick cooldown after it, whereas the heavy attack has a long one, which will make him uh, vulnerable. So that will give the player an opening to attack. The light attack, however, is not going to have much of a cooldown, so he can like hit him once and then immediately spam another attack. And right now, uh, as you can see, he can hit our player, but we can't hit him, which is kind of an issue. So we're gonna have to set up some colliders for him. All right, so now that we got our colliders added, let's see 
if he takes damage. Oh, he did. Maybe, uh, maybe a little bit too much. All right, let's give this a shot. So on death, it should ragdoll. It's too late for this nonsense. Now that we've got basic combat set up, we need a special arena to test this out in, which is exactly what I've been working on here. So let's give it a shot and see what it all looks like put together. All right, so now it is time for the showdown. We've got our environment, we've got our player, we've got our monster. Let's see how this goes. Destroy the child. All right, let's see if I can bait him into attacking. All right, so that's the uh, attack that has a long cooldown. You can get some good hits in. Back off again. Another attack. There we go, quick attack. Long attack. My opening to deal some damage. Back off, back off. Oh, and we got him. Don't want to fix the legs. Not bad for a starting point with this boss. I'm very, very happy with the progress so far tonight. We got a real good chunk of this boss down, but unfortunately, we finished our fourth task, and that means we need to give it another spin. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, you can subscribe, leave a like, and uh, I will see you. Never streaming again.